things you randomly find on your bed. What on earth is a snail doing on my bed? makes that beeping noise but what a pleasure to be able to charge batteries in the shed so thank you again Ricard for doing the setup and uh, thank you um, to the kind person who donated this solar system thank you baby's all doing well this morning They've just been feeding, they've all been jumping around. Now they're just huddling up to get warm because it is a little bit chilly, not too bad. But they were drinking when I arrived this morning, all doing well. They're all piling on top of that one over there. He's having a sleep. But all six were up drinking this morning. Sweetie Pie has recovered from the exertions of giving birth. Little Molly's doing very, very well. As you can see, eating grass. That's Ruby over there. She's always close to either Ruby or Betty. And I think Betty's pregnant. So there's still no, like, um, other developments so i think she's still got a, a while to go but she's pregnant and i've asked the girls next door that when um, someone comes to shear their sheep they'll shear betty as well because although betty is half dorper she hasn't doesn't seem to have inherited the gene where she sheds or molts but it's actually not molting, it's shedding, where she sheds her wool like the other two do, and that like little Molly will do. So she needs to be sheared, uh, so Sean sheared. So when they come to do next door, they'll just add her onto the list. So I kept the pigs locked up in this pen last night um, because I thought if there's a breakout during the night then I can't control where they're going but at least I'm going to open it up now and let them go through there for during the day um, and try and see if I can fix this fence. I have to say electricity is probably Heights and electricity, my two greatest fears in life. But, surprise, surprise, it appears they've opened this gate themselves. So they've actually had access um, to the three big fields. And luckily, Flapjack stayed in. But I'm not too sure exactly what's happened here. I don't want to get a shock. I'm very scared of getting shocks, but I've got to pull it tight somehow over here. And I've um, got the fence tester that the anonymous plumber gave me. Oh my goodness, cheesecake. My leg is not a, you're wanting a scratch. You're thinking my leg is a scratching post. So the problem seems to be, I think it's come off over there. No, Clarence, what are you coming? Don't come and interfere. You're also wanting a scratch. Oh my goodness. Attention seeking pigs. Right, I think, I don't know if this is live or what. Um, maybe if I undo 
maybe if I undo these connector things to the terminal, then I won't get a shock while I touch the fence. Oh my God, I'm so scared touching this. I tell you, I have picked up a Mozambican spitting cobra with my bare hands and killed it. <laughs> when it was um, in the park, I was taking children to, um, yeah, back to the change room after a swimming lesson when I was working in Botswana and this snake came up on the path and raised its head and uh, was ready to strike and I just jumped in and picked it up and slammed it onto the ground like that. I have no fear doing that, but electricity? Oh my goodness. Anyway, I've now disconnected the battery, so hopefully it's not connected. I am going to go, have to go around and cut back um, vegetation, where it's touching vegetation. Um, yeah. If I can fix this, I will be very impressed. Let's get that straight. Otherwise, it seems to be quite tight. I don't know if I can tie those extra pieces can you tie them at the end or how do you stop them from coming out again this one seems to have slipped out of this one yeah there we go put it back in yeah I've definitely got to get rid of this grass and stuff around it. I'm just making sure. I think over here it might be it's touching the wire. So that's going to be a problem. From what I understand about electricity. Um, I don't know how to move this fence back. I wonder. Somehow or other, move this. No, that's not going to work. Let's try and see how to move this fence back away from this tape. Okay, for the time being, it's moved away. Let me try and see if I can pull the bottom one a little bit tighter again. I think I've put it back properly. Right. Now just to try and connect it. Oh. Okay, that one goes there. That one goes there. I don't know. working let me use this meter tester I can't actually see where you switch this on so I don't know maybe I can't test it I'll just have to hope that this is gonna work maybe the testers batteries are dead I don't know I'm not too sure I'll have to do a Google search to see how to get it to work Lots of flowers on the oak trees. Going to be a bumper acorn harvest. Yeah, Flapjack. Did you go out exploring yesterday? I'm hoping I've put that fence back on. But I'm very thrilled you didn't go out last night, even though you guys opened that gate. That was a good boy not to go and do any further exploring. Hey. Oh my goodness, who's this here? Cheesecake again, for more scratches.
or an apple pop. Yeah, apple pie is pregnant. Peaches is pregnant again. Um, and cinnamon bun. So there's three pregnants over here. Cheesecake. Cheesecake has boar tusks and a vagina. So we think she, the vet seems to think she's a hermaphrodite. That's why she's never ever fallen pregnant. Hey, Cheesecake. And Mella Puff, I don't know why she's never fallen pregnant. She was the runt of the litter, so who knows. What's it, Chrissy? <coughs> oh my goodness, he just Ooh. growls and they all move out the way. So Maggie is eight years old now, so um, she's not going to get pregnant again. But Maggie and Chris, he's also eight years old. I'm not sure whether, I think last year might have been his last um, ability to breed. I think he doesn't have the energy to make jump on females. But... Um, I think I think last year might have been Maggie's last uh, litter. That's why I kept Blueberry. She might surprise us, but I don't think so. I think the, usually Kuni Kuni pigs, they stop breeding when they are eight and they can live until 15. So Maggie and Chris will be two pensioners over here and will live out their retirement years over here. Maggie and Chris will not get eaten. They were imported from the UK, both of them. So they will live out their retirement. But we'll see. If she, I doubt she'll fall pregnant. Eight years old, she's too old. The apple pie is about five years old now. Are you coming up behind me for scratches? Flapjack. Doing more house decorating in there. And the babies are all jumping around, fighting already. So I'm going to pick coriander leaves cilantro leaves um, and uh, put them in this and freeze them um, because my experience last year is I thought it would just get the flowers and the seeds and the plants would carry on growing but what happened is as the flowers turned and uh, changed and then there were the seeds I harvested the seeds so I've got lots of those but um, the leaves all died, so I never got to use them. So I'm going to pick the leaves off now. And, um, and then some of the coriander plants I might give to the pigs to eat because I've done some research and apparently it's quite good for them. So because, yeah, once I've picked the leaves, they're going to die. They don't um, carry on growing. So I'm not going to pick each leaf individually. I'm going to yeah, pick like a little branch like that. And then this is what I'll be freezing them all. So as I take the leaves I want, I am pulling them out because um, I want to make space now to plant my uh, watermelon and squash and pumpkin seeds so I'm just because as you can see at the bottom already leaves are dying as um, they flower and get their seeds I tell you I do love the smell of coriander so I'm going to leave those ones for the time being because I've got a nice bowl full so I'm going to rinse this off put it in a a Ziploc bag and then in the freezer and uh, 
I've pulled these plants out that's going to go to the pigs. I tell you it's always a good feeling to produce food not just for myself but um, for my animals. Um, I'm going to come back and I'm going to pick some uh, leaves from the cabbage plants, from the beet, from the lettuce because I'm going to make a um, green soup tonight a nice healthy green soup i've been eating a lot of meat the last couple of days so i want to have just pure vegetables tonight so i've got it in quite a big ziploc bag so that i can flatten it out a little bit and now that, that's going to go in the freezer so I've harvested lots of different kinds of leaves. I've got uh, this kind of cabbage, the lettuce, the normal kind of cabbage, some beet leaves, which I will, which will all be going into this green soup that I'm going to make my healthy detox soup. Just doing a bit of a greens delivery for the pigs. And I must tell you, this little wagon, thank you so much, Dennis Wonder. He gave it to me as a goodbye gift when I was leaving Norway. Best teaching assistant ever, I tell you. So thanks again, Dennis. It's still being used daily. The beeping has stopped, but I've now charged two of my batteries. Third one is now being charged. Guess who's out again and he's being bullied by Henry. I didn't turn the camera on in time, but Henry has just chased him. I'm not sure how he's getting out. I've attached that electric fence, but I don't know if it's working, but he's out again. Stayed in all morning, but Henry is chasing him. <laughs> oh dear. I think cupcake might be in season, which is part of the problem. Because he keeps going over there and she keeps squeaking. The others are just nosy and they come and look, but yeah, I think cupcake is in season. But I don't want her mated now because I don't want uh, babies born in the heat of summer. Oh my goodness, Ruby and Betty, are you both pinching the pig's food? Look at this, Betty, you being greedy. Oh, Ruby, you snatched it out of Betty's mouth. And the joke is, if I put this in their pen, then they just leave it and they don't eat it. But when it's in something for the pigs, that's when they eat it. Oh my goodness, now you're waiting, you're literally waiting at the gate to be let back in. What a cheeky little monkey you are. Yes, and you girls, you girls over here. Cupcake, are you waving your tush in front of Flapjack? Is that the problem? Because Cinnamon Bun and Blueberry are pregnant, and I think Toffee might be, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Definitely you, Cupcake. You waving, you shaking your little tush on the sidewalk. I felt something, there was a song. On the runway, I don't know. Brilliantly clever move there, Flapjack. What have you done? You've managed to get yourself completely stuck in the bucket which was empty how did you manage to get it you're wearing it like a necklace flapjack <coughs> what have you done oh my goodness what a silly billy boy hey you just getting into all kinds of mischief after this morning you're putting your Head on me, now you're wanting to go back in. What do you say, sweetie pie? Oh, already venturing out, these little ones.
TV just over a day old. Isn't nature marvelous? This little one is really sniffing the veggies I've given Sweetie Pie. One lying over there, having a sleep in the sun. They don't generally lie on top of each other during the heat of the day, just when it gets a bit cooler. They're really fighting. Oops. They've got full tummies, they just want to sleep, and then some of them are like exceptionally active, like little spotty over here. Are you Mr. Explorer? Sweetie Pie is going into a wallow, which is under the shade. So I have an onion that's been chopped up, you don't, because I'm going to use the blender, I don't have to do it too finely, and um, a couple of potatoes, also just chopped up with some olive oil, which you saw tell just a little bit, I'm going to add in now about half a teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of fennel, I think, some chili flakes, uh, salt and pepper. Oh, and garlic and ginger. Uh, so I'm going to add in spices because otherwise it's just going to taste like green leaves. So you want to get it some flavor. So I've added in all the spices which sauteed with the onion and the potatoes. I added a little bit of water so that it doesn't stick. I'm now going to add in The leaves and stuff that I picked from the garden and then I'll add in more water and let it boil until the potatoes are soft and then I use the blender. I've added in now about six cups of water. I'm going to, as I said, chop up the leaves, the green leaves. I haven't added any stock cube because basically all the spices and whatever it's making its own stock. I've forgotten to put some chili flakes in. I'm going to put that in now. So this is, I suppose, this could be said, this is like my kind of take on the Portuguese classic caldo, caldo verde um, soup. But just going to let this cook now because it's nice and soft. And then I'll put the blender through it. But I will be adding some Greek yogurt into it as well to make it nice and creamy. Okay, so it's all softened. Potatoes are softened. And I'm now going to use my stick blender. Powered by my all powers over here. And... blended and it's a beautiful green color I'm just going to add in two spoons of Greek yogurt just a little bit of a creamy Can't wait to get stuck into this. Look how delicious. And there you have it. Delicious green soup with toast. And as always, the taste test. Mmm. So much flavor. And so healthy, because apparently you add ginger to things, it's good for weight loss as well. Mmm, hmm. -hmm.
you can't actually tell exactly which spice is which, but they all work together so well to make an incredible, incredible soup. Mm. So Tim Tam didn't come um, for feeding this morning. So this, that means either A, she's sick, or B, she's got out some way. And um, I'm tending to think it's the second option. I don't see her anywhere on the farm. You, normally she'd come down to the gate, but I'm just gonna check the fence to see, like I need to find out where Flapjack is getting out as well. He wasn't out this morning, so he seemed to go out. He goes out for a couple of hours in the afternoon and then he's waiting at the gate to go back in again. So um, I need to find out where he's getting out as well. So the electric fencing I put back yesterday seems to be holding over here seems to be holding along here as well. I just need to cut back those flowers. The electric fence is secure all the way around and the actual fence is also quite secure. So there's no sign as to how Flapjack is actually getting out. Okay, I'm thinking this is where it could be. This has definitely been lifted up here and the electric fencing, the two uh, tapes are touching each other. But I think this is where he's getting out. It's along here. In fact, I'm sure this is exactly where he's getting out. And if Tim Tam has got out, this is where she got out as well. So I don't know if this means the fence isn't working. The electric fence. I don't want to touch it just in case it is. But I want to try. Move the tape to in front of that. I'm just using a stick because I don't want to get a shock if it is working. There we go. Yeah, but this hole is definitely where Flapjack has got out and possibly Tim Tam. Um, I've got the fence, the, fence, the electric tape back inside. Um, Hopefully, it's going to give a shock that this, this whole section of fence, I reckon, is going to have to be replaced anyway. I feed them in this pen, but they actually have free access to three big fields full of grass. So, um... She's not escaping because in Flapjack, the two of them, they're not escaping because they're wanting grass and because they're hungry. They have more grass in those three fields than what's out here because what's out here is mostly like broom and oak trees. There is a bit of grass and weeds, but not as much. Um, so they're not escaping because they're hungry. This pen is just the pen that I feed them in, but they have access to grass fields. So I'm in the top pen with the oak forest pen. Um, I'm not going to put pigs back in here until this is electrified. But I uh, see grass is starting to come up. I've got um, some packets of grass seeds here we got rain forecast over the weekend and this one is a special shady mix so uh, I've um, got the rake and uh, just gonna try and see if I can plant some grass and see if it'll grow with the rain 
it's so nice and shady in this forest. It's definitely several degrees cooler than out in the sun. So this is why this oak forest area is a really great place for the pigs, especially in the heat of summer. Got hay fever from the flowers, Henry. Oops, here comes Molly. Yes, you coming to say hello? That's a bit close. Don't you think it's a bit close? Hmm? Wasn't that a bit close? No sign, of course, of Tim Tam anywhere. But the grass is quite long over here. Hopefully she's still on the farm and hasn't made her way off. But you can see how much grass I've got on the farm. Like, just stay on the farm. Why would you head off? There's not as much grass as I've got here. looking at all these olive trees I'd done quite a hard prune but you wouldn't say so um, the way they're growing but you can see I'll show you can you see the flowers on the olive trees this was the only tree um, last year that had no olives and I'm just looking at it now and I don't see um, any flowers on this tree at all either so I don't think it's going to be producing olives again. Actually, I got it wrong. That one had olives last year, but there's no, I don't see flowers this year. This one had no olives last year, but it is absolutely covered in flowers. So I think this year we'll have a nice harvest from this particular tree. But yeah, tree surgeon said these trees are about 300 years old. Had a big harvest from this tree last year, but it also seems to have no flowers. So this is what happens with the olive trees, is like one year you get a good harvest and then the next year, not so good. It's like alternate years. This one is absolutely covered in flowers. We did get olives from this one last year. But it looks like it's going to be a better harvest this year. Had a good harvest from this tree last year. And it's got some branches don't seem to have flowers. But then there's others with lots of flowers. So get something from this one. Still no sign of Tim Tam. My shadows. Hey, I don't want, oh my goodness, what kick, oh, look at those jumps. I don't know why you're going down the road. I don't think I want you to go that way. The sheep are the best detectives in the world. Guess who they stumbled upon? Madame Tim Tam. Tim Tam, what did you do? Did you crawl under a fence? Don't turn your back on me.
Did you turn your back on me? Tim Tam. The aim is to get this whole um, property fenced in before the end of summer, actually. That's the, the goal. Don't fall off there, Henry. Don't slip. You're not a goat, you're a sheep. Well, at least we know where she is. I don't mind if she stay as long as she stays on the farm, she can wander around and eat. I don't mind. I'll put her in again this evening. I'm sure she'll be ready for grain then. Now she's finding all the acorns that came from this oak tree well these two big oak trees over here oh careful molly henry if you fall oh my goodness just be careful oh lord what is he doing <sighs> just get back up get back up my nerves can't take this oh Ruby, careful. I think you guys need to get off this rock. I'm getting nervous. I think this area will be good under this tree for the shady one where um, pigs have turned this over a little bit. I can plant some grass seeds here. And I'm thinking this one gets sun. I can plant maybe some of the Four Seasons one that I've mixed that I've got around here. There is grass growing and within... The pen, there are actually lots of grassy areas already. Um, I'm just trying to add more grass. Just two are drinking. The others are out. Oh, one's enjoying the sun. Oh, now they're She's calling them. She's calling them. <laughs> she was calling them. And they all come running, and then she decided, no, not feeding you after all. Pass along. So, yesterday afternoon, I had quite a bit of online work. And when I came to feed them, it was a far, this was a far bigger mess. Um, Tim Tam had made herself a bed over here. Somehow or other they'd got to this side. I think that end part where um, bricks had been removed from holding the um, barricade down. Uh, her and Flapjack, Flapjack got out again. And he, but he was just mooching next to the girls over there. But um, Tim Tam made herself a bed here. Yeah, you can see she created an absolute disaster area with everything. She um, knocked over like the sheep feed. She's eaten half of the sheep feed. She could hardly walk afterwards. She was so full. <laughs> And she did, she went, I managed to get both her and um, um, Flapjack into Gingerbread's pen up there. And yeah, I just felt so frustrated yesterday. I thought, you know what, I can just cry from frustration. You know, you pay, you pay literally thousands um, in the materials to have fencing put up. You pay for the labor. And you just have to keep redoing it. It's 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 soul destroying. And I've just put so much money now into electric um, fencing, but I don't think the electric is working. So um, I'm not I'm not too sure what to do next. And people are always commenting that oh no, they're breaking out because they're hungry and they want food. But the bottom line is, 
they don't break out of the small pins which has exactly the same fencing as the big pins they break out of the big pins that has ample food fields of green grass those are the pins they break out of when they are in the smaller pins they don't have the green grass they don't break out of those so i think it's definitely the more grass we have <laughs> the more grass we want if we don't have grass then we don't want grass so when i came out this morning to feed these piglets i had a completely unexpected <coughs> surprise it appears that um cinnamon bun who i still checked yesterday and she wasn't that slack at the back so i thought mm, she's got a couple more weeks to go has given birth she's made herself a nest under the shade you can see um the afterbirth is there there is one little piglet that didn't make it but it's honestly it looked like it had mummified or something it's um it's not even half the size of the others so uh yeah, I wasn't quite prepared for this because I check the size of the vulva and when it gets slack, then I know that's when I'm going to move them. But I'm going to now move these uh, piglets from this nest that she's made and um, put them into the, into the, the house. And these other three... If I put them in the pen next door, they're just going to, they will get under the fence, I know. So I'm going to have to put them across the road where I've now got Tim Tam. Oh, it's like a whole group over there now. Tim Tam, Gingerbread and Flapjack, who always um, <sighs> manage to lift up fences. So I'm going to move them across, but I will only be able to move them this afternoon because they've eaten now so um, they tend to be better at following the bucket when they are hungry okay let's see how many has she got one two three four five six seven eight nine there's ten over here number 11 is the one that was still born and mummified so i do have a wagon of straw i'm going to put some fresh straw in there as well um, she has actually carried a lot of the straw out that was in the house to build her nest. And in this particular house, there is that cordoned off area where piglets can go to avoid being sat on by other pigs. So I think it will be okay for today. But I've got to move those other three this evening. Okay, I've put in more fresh straw. You can see where she's moved all the straw up. But I've put in fresh straw. They've got um, the area they can get to at the back where the other pigs can't get into. Oh, she's squashing one. Someone's being squashed. Oh, wait, you're squashing one. You're squashing one. You're squashing one. There we go. So she's lying down to feed them. I don't know how much milk she's got. She usually has a lot more. She's still not even that slack at the back. I'll let her feed them and then I'll move them. She's presenting to feed. They do seem to have quite full tummies and they're not cold. There's a very tiny one over there. It's also half the size of the others, but not as small as that mummified one. I'm going to sort of help them find her teats now, I think. The smallest one appears to have latched on. The others are still all wandering around. She's trying to call them. I've got them even checking my feet over here. But the smallest one is definitely latched on. I'm hoping she's going to be able to service all of them. Usually she has lots of milk and yeah, but this is a huge litter. 
there was one in the pig house so there's actually 11 so she actually had 12 but the one one didn't complete the growing process I'm not sure how they're all gonna find teats that little one is yeah it latches on and then they try and move it off this is gonna be a a fight it's very important they get um, this colostrum so hopefully they will all find their place to drink so there's seven on the top row of teats and I think there's four on the bottom row of teats at the moment so they're all drinking And if her milk wasn't in properly, it will definitely come in now. Because if you remember, uh, was it two years ago, Cinnamon Bun started feeding apple pies babies. And then I thought she was having a false pregnancy because she never had babies. And then two weeks later, hers arrived and then, you know, she'd already given all her colostrum. To apple pies piglets and they couldn't compete with the others and yeah, that was a tragedy but now it seems hopefully the milk will come in oh my goodness what a surprise completely unexpected i was still checking last night because i check vulvas every every morning every night and hers still looked quite tight over there so and normally um, like last year it was big like sweetie pie so I don't know I think they might have come a little bit earlier than even she expected so that's all for today so keep safe keep sane and I'll see you on the next video